Now, isn't it surprising that you can use a sum function to basically count? Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. On this channel, we try to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions. This video is in continuation of the SQL 50 Crack SQL Interview in 50 Question series where we are trying to learn hands-on SQL by 50 carefully curated questions covering diverse aspects of SQL. So we are already done with select and with this video, we will be done with basic joints as well. Then we will be working on basic aggregate functions, then sorting and grouping, then advanced select and joins, subqueries, and finally on advanced string functions, regex and clauses. In our previous video, we solved this question called managers with at least five direct reports, where we also learned about having clause and when to use it. In this video, we are going to work on this confirmation rate question and try to learn from it. So yeah, let's jump right in. So yeah, this is the 14th question of the series confirmation rate. And if I look at the companies, this question has been asked in. So Amazon in last six months, so kind of an important question. Let's look at what the question is saying. We are given a table called signups with two different columns, user ID and timestamp and their data types being integer and date time. User ID is the column of unique values for this table. Each row contains information about the signup time for the user with ID, user ID. We are also given in another table called confirmations with three different columns user id timestamp and action and the data types being integer date time and enum category respectively the combined columns user id and timestamp is the primary key that is combination of columns with unique values for this table user id is a foreign key that is a reference column to the sign up tables so now we already know how to join these two tables action is an enum category of the type and it can take values either confirmed or timeout each row of this table indicates that the user with ID, user ID requested a confirmation message at timestamp and that confirmation message was either confirmed or expired without confirming. In that case, it would be timeout. The confirmation rate of a user is the number of confirmed messages divided by the total number of requested confirmation messages. The confirmation rate of a user that did not request any confirmation messages is zero as well. Round the confirmation rate to two decimal places. We are asked to write a solution to find the confirmation rate of each user. Order of the result does not matter. Okay, so basically what this question is saying, let's try to look at through this example. So here we have four different users in the signups table and their confirmation request, right? So we need to calculate the confirmation rate. So total number of time confirmed divided by the total number of time the request was sent. So for example, let's look at user ID 3, right? So user ID 3 has two rows in the confirmation table and both are timeout, right? So basically the request was made two times and zero times it was confirmed. So zero out of two is zero percent confirmation rate, right? Similarly, if we look at user ID seven, so we have three rows in the confirmation table and all the three times user ID seven has been confirmed. So three confirmed divided by total request three, that is hundred percent. For user ID 2, we have one confirmed and one timeout, so 50%, right? And for user ID 6, since there is no request, so the question says that if there is no request, we also consider them as zero, right? So that is what we have in our output, right? So basically, since we need to use information from both the signups table and the confirmation table, we need to perform a join. That is for sure. But what kind of join? So here, in our output, irrespective of whether we have a user mentioned in confirmation table or not, just like we saw, right? So six is not in our confirmation table, but still we had that in our output. So basically, this gives us a sign that we need to keep every user in the signups table. So this tells you that we need to perform a left join where we need to keep the signups table on the left and confirmation table on the right, right? So let's start with it. So from Right. So from this table, right, we know we are performing a left join. So from this table called signups, right, signups aliased as uh, S, right. So signups aliased as S. Let me do a left join of confirmations, right, confirmations table aliased as C on. We already identified during the question that we need to use the user ID, right. So user ID is equal to confirmations dot user id right let me go ahead and return all the columns for this so select star uh, you know let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we have here okay 
So if I look at our output, let me drag it to the left so that it is easy visible for us. So here, if we look at it, right? So here for every user ID, we are now having the number of rows we have in the confirmations table. And for the user ID that we do not have in our confirmations table, we are populate. We have one row where it is populated null from for the columns coming from the confirmations table, right? So now once we have this, then we need to perform a group by, right? Because for every user ID, we need to get the confirmation rate, right? So let's go ahead and do a group by right so group by the user id and we are going to use the user id column from the signups table right so s dot user id and we learned about group by that if you are grouping by a certain column you can return that column as well it is not mandatory but you can but you cannot return a column that you are not grouping by right it is going to give you an error so s dot user id and now how do we calculate the confirmation rate so basically confirmation rate is number of times confirmed divided by the total number of times applied right so total number of times applied is very simple just you just count all the rows you have for a particular user right so that is the number of times the person has applied but to count whether how many times the person has been confirmed you need to either use case when statements or using the if function but in both of these cases the basic idea is that to calculate the number of times confirmed we need to firstly replace confirmed with a value let's say one and if it is not confirmed with zero and then you sum it up right so if i go ahead and use the if function right so if i write if your action right so action column is coming out from the confirmations table right so c dot action is equal to confirmed right is equal to confirm then you replace it at one else you replace it with zero right so this is going to replace all the confirmed as one for a particular group right and then what do we need to do is you need to sum it up right so it is going to count the number of times they were confirmed right because total number of times confirmed divided by the total number of time requested is the definition of confirmation rate right so this is your total number of times confirmed and we just established that the way to calculate the total number of times applied is just do a count star so basically count all the rows for a particular user id right you just did that and we also need to round this right so if i drag it slightly on the right so round the round it to two decimal places right so we can go ahead and round it as well so round this entire thing to two decimal places right and this should be aliased as whatever is required in our output so this should be called confirmation rate right so confirmation rate okay let me go ahead and drag it down and go let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we have so this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me drag it on the right so that it's easier for us okay now if i go ahead and submit it let's see if it passes all the test cases or not yeah, this is accepted and this is how we do it again this question can also be done by case when statements the only difference in this code is going to come in this part right so instead of using if function you just do case when your action is equal to confirm then one else zero end and then you perform the sum part right so exact same thing you can do either if function or you can do the case when statements right but the basic funda is you need to replace confirmed by a, such as one so that you can you easily perform a sum now isn't it surprising that you can use a sum function to basically count because here what we are basically doing we are counting the number of times the person confirmed right isn't it a good trick to know so yeah, this is how we do it. Let me know if there's a better way or more efficient way to solve this question. Let the solution be in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next video.